Now what I need to add is three apps which I was mentioning or talking about. So if I go into app finder here, then my three apps for workflow will be my inbox, which I need to add to my home, close it, monitor workflow, add it to my home, close it and monitor workflow. Now the title is monitor workflows in both of these apps, but one is for workflow definitions and one is for monitoring workflow instance. So what is workflow definitions? What is instance? We will find out in a couple of seconds now. So these three apps are added in the home. So if I go to home, now you can see that three apps are there. One is my inbox. So if I get any workflow request, I will see it here. So at the present moment, they will be blank or it will be blank because there was no inbox request or workflow request in my inbox. The second is workflow definition. We have previously from our full stack web ID pushed this workflow to our cloud workflow. So what we did, we did right click deploy to our cloud platform workflow. So what will happen here in workflow definition, we will be seeing that workflow. So if I go inside, then I can see demo workflow P1, which is this workflow. So when we deploy it, I can see it in my workflow definition of monitor workflow app. Now what I can do here, I can start new instance of this workflow, which will initiate the workflow. So initiation of the workflow means I am starting the workflow activity. So if I start the workflow, this is the sample data, which is given to you. I can basically remove it because I don't need any of the sample data. So by default, I got all this data, but I will basically not require here. So let's start the workflow instance with blank data. And uh, once the workflow is started, then in the monitor workflow, I can basically see this already a filter. I will remove the filter and I can see in a couple of seconds the workflow instance. So let me come back here in workflow monitoring or workflow instance. Can you see completed? So this is my demo workflow P1 getting completed. And let me go to home because it happened very quickly. I went here in the definition. I got my workflow, which I deployed. I started the workflow in my workflow instance. I will be able to monitor how the workflow performed. Was it completed successfully? Was it there was error or is it still running or waiting for some user to give inputs so I can find the status here now in the workflow context. So this is the important part. I previously mentioned that context is a variable in which all the steps intermediate step write and read. So that's how the data flows between different steps. Now you can see that this entire JSON data is the context. So what we did here in the workflow, if you go into general and uh, this is the name, if we go to details, then this is the action we perform. Let me close the console here. We try to just do a get entity request for our Northwind API and we are just reading product and we got the data from that API of Northwind and we put all the data inside the context variable with product property. So if we go back to monitor workflow here, then you can see that there is the context which is just blank and we have a product and the product is this entire response or object. So if you go back to our web page where we have requested the data from our Northwind product one, then this is the exact same data which we see. So whatever the response we got, which is this particular object, we basically were successfully able to add it to context. So 
this is how we work with workflow whenever we have to add some data from an api we put it to the context with a new property like product is the new property we created and um, this was done here in the response variable and the product element was added in the context and we can see here what is the content or what is the data inside product which is exactly the data we get in return when we call the service there are other execution log also present in the workflow instance of monitoring workflow and you can also see here if there are some error which you want to really debug or want to find out more about you can get those in error messages and the workflow information gives a basic brief about who is the starter what is the instant id and version of this workflow so i hope that this simple use case give you a idea about how this workflow is basically put into picture what is context now in the coming use cases we will be building more on this and i want you to get a good understanding and hold on how to work with context because we will be now also using scripts and also using forms and there whenever we want to add more activity if i want to add one more service activity after this service activity i can do that if i want to transfer data between service task 2 and service task 3 then i will have to pass it through context so that's how workflow is designed that's how data passes through and that's how all the tasks are done so if the task 2 is finished then task 3 gets done and if task 3 is done then if it's the last task and there's the end event after that then the workflow stops and if everything was successful then you get a status as completed in the workflow here so that's how simple workflow is i hope that you got a basic overview about the workflow so let's go and see what are all the steps which we carried out in this first use case of workflow